So before you do anything else, get your mortgage in principle agreed. It can take a bit longer than it used to now, so this is the, the first thing you should do. Next thing, get a solicitor. Now, the reason I say this is because when you do find that property that you want, things are going to move quite quickly. Right. Now, the other thing is, when you're buying, generally, an estate agent will recommend a solicitor. Now, be aware of the fact that they're going to make a fee on that. So they're going to be recommending a solicitor that's going to be ah. giving them a fee. And you can shop around and you can use any solicitor that you want. So make sure you get a good deal on your conveyancing fee. You say it's a good idea also to ask your solicitor about insurance. Yes. So remember that until a property has exchanged, it could, things might go wrong. And in that instance, you've still got legal fees to pay. So whether or not the sale exchanges or not, you've still got to pay your legal bill. Now, what solicitors do is offer an insurance policy. So just ask about that. It's about 70 to 80 pounds, and it means that if your part, your um, your purchase doesn't exchange, you're covered. You, you're covered, and you can claim on that to get your legal fees back. So, and if that happens to you, which it probably will do, because the chances are, every time you go through this process, you don't end up getting the house you it, first it, want. You know, I really hope it doesn't happen to yeah. people. But for 70 or 80 pounds, it's just it's really worth not it. worth not doing. Um, Good idea. You, what, what sort of uh, qualifications should they have? You should always look for a solicitor who's a member of the Law Society or a licensed conveyor. So both do the same thing, they've obviously had to sit exams, but the other thing to think about is make sure that you ask for a solicitor who's part of the quality conveyancing scheme. So what that will do, um, conveyancing quality scheme even, and, and what that means is this is a voluntary body that qualified solicitors join, but it's an audited process. Mm. So it means these are the guys who are absolutely going to give you top-notch service. So okay. there's, uh, there's your money in place, you yes. know what you've got to spend, yes. you've organised your legals, yes. um, and you say when you're looking for your house, think about selling it when you're buying it. Yes. So the first thing I say to people when you're buying a house is think how you're going to sell that in a few years' time. Because it's very easy, it's exciting, as you say. Mm. Raised into spectacles, you fall in love with something, and you may not have covered all the bases. So what are the things to look out for then? I always say trains, planes and automobiles right. to start with. Think about flight paths, think about train lines near mm -hmm. that you can hear trains, think about road noise. So those are the basics. Mm -hmm. Then start to think about other things. So is it in a busy area, like is there a school at the end of the road, which might be great, mm -hmm. but on the other hand you've got traffic and peak times of day. So Nowadays in catchment that. areas, that's almost a bonus. Isn't yeah, it? it may be for some people, yeah. but equally it might be very difficult to get in and out of your house True. at nine o'clock and half past three in the morning. Yes. So, and noise from playgrounds, which is lovely. Not for everybody. Bear in mind. But there are other things that sometimes are a little less obvious that you do need to think about. So, for example, if something's on the market at what you would perceive to be a bargain price, it could be down to the vendor's circumstances. So it could be a probate sale, or it could be a change in their life and they just need to sell quickly. Providing that all stacks up, great. It could be the property needs a lot of work. In that instance, for goodness sake, get a survey, figure out really how much money you've got to spend if it's structural, and actually, will it be worth spending that money on that mm. property? So, obviously, that's something that you can rectify. But then you need to think about the things that doesn't matter how much money you throw at the property, you can't change. So, when we start to think about that, it's the other factors around the property that can sometimes influence whether or not that's going to be a little bit more tricky to, to sell. Yeah. Uh, rivers. Yes, yes. So, ah. for example, it's lovely to live next to water, absolutely gorgeous, but we had a, a, you know, we had a really the awful... Floods, of course, yeah. yes. So that can have a really big impact on whether or not you can actually insure the place, because if it's in a flood risk area and you will need buildings insurance for your mortgage, that could be an issue. So if you spot something next to a river, get the postcode, go online, speak to them, some insurers, find out what you can insure it for and if it's insurable. What's the next Pub. one? Yeah, some people's dream to live next to a pub, I know, <laughs> but... It's um, my dream to live in one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just worth bearing in mind, tipsy loud people at, at closing time, outside your front door, might, be not, might not be quite so great, <laughs> you know, you could wake up your kids if you've got kids. And um, Also think about deliveries, so you've got big heavy goods oh, vehicles true, delivering, which yeah. is going to make a noise. So, in theory, yes, it sounds great, but just think about the things around the edges. What, what about wrong with the church? church? Yeah. yeah. Well, this one, first of all, you've got your bells. Lovely on a Sunday morning if you're having a lie-in. And it looks idyllic. It does, it's doesn't like it? Mark I used to, come out used to live, when I was growing up, we used to live uh, in a village called Crantock, just outside Newquay, and the, the Crantock church is beautiful. My bedroom, uh, the window open, I could hear the bells. The practice wasn't always brilliant, yeah. but, but, but the, I loved it. Yeah, and again, some people might not perceive it as an issue. 
great. Worth bearing in but mind. Worth bearing in mind. But the big thing, and I'll just cover it quickly, is chancery repair liability. Now, this dates back to medieval times when the parishes gave people land to build on. What it means in modern times now is that you could be responsible for the upkeep of the church roof. Really? And that can run into hundreds of thousands of pounds. So... I want to know who the hell it was that built all these church roofs in the first place, because they're all rubbish. <laughs> they're all, yeah, <laughs> terrible surveyor. <laughs> so, just make sure, when you are, if you are looking at a property like this, in a beautiful village with a church, your solicitor will do a check called a chancery liability search to make sure that your property isn't liable. If it is, you buy a piece of insurance called chancery liability insurance that covers you in the event you have to pay for and the roof. Right, in wow. the last, uh, last few moments, you say, be nosy about your vendor. See, I think there's five main questions that you should ask. It's a, your right to ask these questions because they will affect the offer that you put forward. Yeah. So you really need to understand the circumstances. We're through them very quickly for so us. Very quickly. So first of all, is the property going to be offered with vacant possession or is there going to be a chain? Chain's complicated, vacant possession, lovely smooth, quick, okay. quick transaction. Next thing, think very carefully, will the vendor withdraw the property from the market? You don't want other people looking at it after you've had your offer accepted yeah. and you're racking up legal fees. So okay. you need to ask, will you take the property off the market? Okay. Next thing to think about would be... When is the vendor looking to, to exchange, exchange and complete? complete? Could be two different times. Yes. So that what they might want to do is get on with it as quickly as possible, but what they also might want to do is exchange with a delayed completion, which will affect your move date. Okay. Fixtures and fittings, are they included in the sale price? Never assume that what you see in the kitchen and what's hanging on, on the curtains you're going to end up with. So always ask, are they included in the purchase price? And finally, very important, are there, have there been any problems with neighbours? Yes. They have to tell you that, they don't do. they? They do. By law, so they must declare if there have been any disputes with neighbours.